Shalom. Our verse for today is Matthew chapter 5, verse 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? In Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, a section is dedicated to contrast, whereby former religious and human practices that are based on the law of Moses are contrasted with new ones. While the former is determined by the law, the new is determined by grace and truth, as we read in the Gospel of John 1.17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So, the contrast that Jesus makes in his Sermon on the Mount is necessary to indicate the arrival of the Messianic Age, that is the Age of Grace. We should note that Jesus is not condemning the law and its demands. Rather, he is updating it in order to raise it up to perfection. He earlier stated in Matthew 5.17, Do not imagine that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to complete them. Our verse for the day falls within the context of our relationship with one another as human beings. In the past, as Jesus says, you have heard that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is a natural human drive and tendency. Both the upright and the wicked do the same. As our verse queried, do not even tax collectors do the same? Contrary to this human practice, however, Jesus says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. One of the reasons Jesus gave as to why we should not only love our neighbors but ought to also love our enemies is this. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? The lessons for today are this. First, a neighbor is not an enemy. The neighbor is not just someone who lives close to me, but someone that loves and cares about me, and someone I also love and care about. Anybody that I hate or that hates me is not my neighbor, even if he lives next door. The neighbor is someone with whom I reciprocate goodness as neighbor that is to say my next door neighbor with whom i share no love whatsoever is considered an enemy second jesus is not asking us to stop loving those who love us when he says if you love those who love you what reward do you have the reward of loving those who love us is being loved by them in return when we love one another we already reward one another the fact that we already have our reward by loving those who love us does not mean that Jesus is not happy with us. If Jesus expects us to love our enemies, do you think he would be sad when we love our loved ones and our neighbors? Certainly not. Third, the loving, loving our enemies requires extra effort and this is the kind that attracts God's attention. When we begin to love our enemies, we begin to act like God who cares about the well-being of both the wicked and the righteous. He makes his rain and sun come as a blessing to both. To love our enemies is to act beyond any human inclination. Such a disposition could be described as walking by the Spirit. St. Paul exhorts, When you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians 5.18 the essence of being led by the Spirit is so that our actions can be elevated beyond human expectation. We become extraordinary, and God is interested in our extraordinariness. In a world filled with hatred and with reasons that can cause hatred, we are expected to be different. The world will hate us because we do not belong to the world. John 17, 14-16 However, our actions of love can gradually transform our world and make it a place for neighborliness. Let us pray. Lord, we often fail in loving those who love us, and yet you expect us to love even our enemies. It is a difficult task, but it is possible because you ask us to do so. Help us with the grace to do as you want and as you will. Amen.